The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We had been discussing Chapter 4, Vidana Karma Sanyasa Yoga, Yoga of Renunciation of Accents in Knowledge. This is all about knowledge, all about what the real I is. So far in the Chapter 2 and 3, saying that what I consider I is not I, but that which is permanent, that which is ajaha, that which is immortal is me. But then chapter 3 talked about all the karma yoga, that how do I act in this world and not get bound by those actions. The continuing is that same theme, that now how do I act in this world but not get bound by them, is the theme of this chapter. So the first thing Bhagavan says, Ajahapi, I am unborn. He clarifies first that let's keep in mind that what's the theme of our discussion. Our theme of our discussion is, from chapter 2 onward, is, I am unborn. Avyayatma, immutable. There is no change ever takes place in the self. The supreme self, which is all-pervading, is ajaha, not born. Swamiji gives a commentary here that, in the early part of Vedic literature, there was a great emphasis on immortality. No death, deathlessness. He said that, in the later part of this Vedic literature, they switched on to aja, unbornness, birthlessness. So all of our stories about the devas are looking for nectar, amrit. There is always a fear of death. Over a period of time they realize that it's not the death you should be worried about. It is the birth you should be worried about. As long as there is birth, there will be death. Only way you can overcome death is by not having birth. That's where it all started, because of my birth, that I am now afraid of death. If I achieve the birthlessness, deathlessness I already achieved. So therefore Bhagavan clarifies, very first you know, declaration in this chapter is, Ajaha Apisan, I am unborn. Avyayatma, no mutation ever takes place in myself. Now obviously Bhagavan is speaking from the highest perspective of the all-pervading self. But we have also seen that our own self is no different than his self. This room space is no different than the space outside. Before this building was built, this space was nothing but the continuation of the space outside. I created this conditioning called walls, floor and ceiling now the same space which is part of the universal space, I now consider it to be a room space. So all the qualities of the space outside still remains intact in the room space. Except in my perception they're conditioned by this conditioning called walls, floor and ceiling. In my own existence, it is something similar. The self which is all pervading in my own self are exactly same. Whatever the qualities attributed to the Supreme Self are also valid for my own self. So the first thing is said, Ajaha Pi San, I am unborn as the Supreme Self. Therefore my own self is also unborn. Avyayatma, no mutation ever took place. Space never get contaminated by or affected my bad designs. <laughs> we design buildings, not all of them are, are good. So we jokingly say the doctors bury their mistakes. And what do we architects do? We put it out there for the world to see. So every time we pass it, who the heck designed this thing? Right. But the space in a good building or a bad building are not affected by 
an architect's design, it remains immutable, imperishable. This place was not brought from Hanover County. It will never be transported back to Hanover County. So he said, I am unborn, therefore you are unborn, yourself is unborn. Avyayatma, no mutation ever took place. But Bhutanam Iswaropi San, but I am still the Lord of all the beings. Beings are beings because of my presence. And they are created out of my Maya. It is my Maya which created this universe. Out of my own self. There is no other material available to Bhagawan when he created this universe, other than his own self. But if you say there are other material existing, he is limited. He is no more unlimited. So if he is unlimited, you have to accept that there was no other material ever available to him to create this universe. And therefore, the material he used to create this universe is nothing but his own self. That self, he says, is immutable. No change ever took place in it. Only in your perception. Out of your ignorance. Out of my ignorance, I create my world and identify with this body, mind and intellect. Just as we walk into this room, we identify this space with this room and say, this room is too low. Ceiling is not too good. Nearly should have made some ceiling a little higher. So it will because we are affected by the conditioning. Our perception is affected by the conditioning. Same way, Bhagwan said that Bhutana Miswaropisan, all beings are who they are because of my presence. This room exists because of room space. Just wall, floor and ceiling does not make the room. The heart of this room is the space in the room. Without space, there is no room. Without self, there is no being. So Bhagavan said, I am Iswar. I am the Lord of all beings. However, this universe I have put forth according to its own dharma. Maya has its own dharma. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Those gunas and dharmas are inherent in this universe. And when there is a decay of this dharma, when those dharmas decline, I as the creator will set it back. I will come back. I will participate actively in the creation to set the creation back to as I design. Time and again we renovate my building. I uh, designed something, after a while it gets deteriorated. We just changed carpet in my front room because when I designed in 2004, I had a perception what the room looks like. Over a time, the carpet got soiled. I have to Srujami Aham as the architect again and say, change the carpet. Carpet is changed. Now it looks the way I have thought in my mind before. So Bhagavan said the same way I come back again, yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati. When the essential dharma of this universe gets out of line, then I take active participation. Just as I took active participation in creating this universe, I'll set the universe back to its dharma. Paritranaya sadhunam vinasaya chaduskrita. Whatever went out of dharma, I will eliminate. And then whatever is in line with dharma, I will protect it. So the dharma principle will be restored. And as I say, dharma is a self-regulating principle. As soon as you get out of your dharma, you lost your existence. As soon as sugar loses its sweetness, if you put sugar on, on frying pan and it becomes black and now you put it in your mouth, it's not sweet, it lost its existence because it's lost its dharma. So now it is carbon. It's no more sugar. You won't call it sugar anymore. So Bhagavan says, as soon as the dharma gets out of line, the thing or being loses its existence. I destroy that by the very fact that the dharma is lost. So he said, therefore I come back again and again every time. So I assure you that my creation will always remain as I have designed, the will of dharma makes it function. And then he said that every being still has to continue working. All beings who are working, they are working in my path alone. No matter what I am doing or you are doing, she is doing, he is doing, everybody is doing, is because of that consciousness in them. 
they are functioning because they are living beings. Dead Einstein cannot invent anything. As long as they are alive, created, whatever. And whether I'm going in a right direction or wrong direction in terms of what my goals are in life, as long as I take the support of my consciousness, it will allow me to go in the direction which I think is appropriate. That is because of the equipment that I have. The equipment which I have will decide what direction I will take. My mind, my intellect, my body will determine what actions I'm taking. And what direction I'll take, whatever my desires are. Therefore, kāṅsataha karmanam siddhi, ijanti iha devataha. Because we want success in this life. We want success which is measurable success. Something which I can show people and say, this is what I did in the last four years, five years, ten years. So what we'll do is something if say, well, this is some pie in the sky type of a goal. I don't really pursue it. I want to pursue something which is, I can show the result to the world. In this world, getting result of your actions are easy and measurable and showable. Therefore, Bhagavan says, Kaṅsata karmanam siddhi ijanti ihadevataha. Therefore, we pursue those senses because I think I will get the results which I can enjoy. The whole goal I have is to enjoy the fruits of my actions. I do not want to perform any action which I already know there is no result for it. If I know that I can keep working in this company and they won't ever promote me or will ever recognize my work, what is the normal advice? Neil, you better leave this company and find someplace else which is. I work and I get result. So my fruits of actions are driving me. And by one said, therefore, people are pursuing different paths what they think will give them those results. So why my field is different than yours and your field is different than hers and hers is different than him? Next verse is, says, Chatur Varnam Maya Srishtam Guna Karma Vibhaga Shaha Kartaram Apimam Vidhi Kartaram Avyayam This is not a social commentary on Indian caste system. This book was not written to have a commentary on whether a caste system is right or wrong. This book is a commentary about yourself. It's a self-development book. Gita was not written for you to learn and then teach other people. Gita was designed for you to learn yourself and make progress. Now, I don't know why I am putting these efforts in this field and not going in. Why did I go to architecture school? I should have been smart enough to figure out that time that I should be either medical or maybe some business or Wall Street type of, you know. Commerce. Nobody wanted to go in commerce in my days. You know. MBA wasn't even invented. I think it was there. But nobody knew. Nobody ever told me, Neil, you can be MBA. You know. So only three options I had. You become a doctor. So that's your first choice. Second, a chemical engineer. The second choice. And third, either electrical or civil engineer. After that, no choice, really. After that, BA, BS, BCom, no value. Nobody told me that if you go to commerce, Neil, and become... Wall Street banker, you will be much better off than becoming an architect. But he said, no. Why did you follow what you followed? Chatur Varnam Mayasrastam Guna Karma Vibhagasaha. Looking at the mental moods of people, you can say that the entire human race can be divided into four classifications. And Bhagavan said, I created them. I'm taking full responsibility. Don't think that it was by accident that people are different from each other. I created them. Guna karma vibhaga saha. They need to be complementary. This society cannot function if all want to be architects. There won't be any clients. So if I want to play a cop and robber game, somebody has to be cop and somebody is a robber. Right? To play the game, I have to have both characters. To make this universe function, I need to have all the ingredients needed for this universe. For make the human race function, and it have all types of people, will make the human society possible. So the beings are who they are because of the mood of their mind, the quality and texture of their mind. Therefore the word varna is, chatur varnam, mayasa, varnam, four types of mental makeup I created. Just as Prakriti has three gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. 
the permutation combination of this sattva rajas and tamas creates four types of people and those four types in this case a varna color color means four shades of people there is no intention to say that there are four types of skin colors in our society we did at the time you know white or dark even in this society you basically either you know white or colored nwacp national association of colored so we know that it is the texture of my mind which gives a color to my personality so there are colors described in our culture sattva is always white rajas is red and tamas is dark or black therefore the word varna is used here so it is not a commentary on social caste system the caste system was created by the social engineers who designed the society how that should function and maybe they figured out over a period of time that it much easier if a doctor's son becomes a doctor so the society was more efficiently functioning when a carpenter's son became carpenter otherwise you have to reinvent the wheel all the time when i went to architecture school it was like reinventing the whole my cultural will because there was no architects in my entire genealogy going back to wherever you can know. or nobody has any inclination to design anything so i had to struggle through architecture school even though i liked it but because there was no background and my classmates somebody's uncle was architect somebody's brother was architect somebody's father was architect they were way ahead of me the first 3 years of my architecture school i just struggled through it i got grip almost in my fourth year and fifth year and i really got grip of architecture after i graduated i struggled through it so what we do to our children is not make them struggle through we say well i'll teach you right from the beginning that's how the society was probably divided into the caste system that we know however there is no intention of bhagwan here saying i created the caste system the neil you will be an architect my mother when i went to architecture school obviously nobody understood architecture in my family so keep asking me the bhai tu kare so what do you do i said mom i design building we learn how to design building then build building i go oh yeah yeah to like apna mistri aave re you know you understood you just like the mistri come to our house he said then you will be just like them i said what do you mean just like them he said they ye log ko vaida bahu kare i'll come tomorrow okay then he won't show up So you will be like them. I said, no, no, mom, I'm not a mystery. I'm going to be an architect. He said, yeah, but same thing, right? You're going to. So you're a Brahmin who is supposed to be fairly knowledgeable and scholar. You came down to a mystery, but I said, I'm fine with that. Probably I was born with those sudra qualities, so I'll be perfectly fine. That's how the society was probably designed or engineered by the social engineers. But one said, I did not. I created. four types of people chatur varnam maya srishtam guna karma vibhaga saha according to guna and their karma now we know our gunas will drive my desires my tendencies will drive my desires my desires will drive my actions that guna and karma depending on that the society anywhere in the human race wherever you go whether in a basic caveman society or very sophisticated american society or ancient vedic society there will be always four types of people those who like to be in the academic environment and do research then there will be leaders the kshatriyas leaders fighters controllers then the vaishyas who create wealth and then obviously working class service class he said that's given in any society and i am the author of that i created i the lord bhutana me swarupisan i created them however vidhi akartaram avyayam but no that i am not doing anything and i'm not affected by them in my own self none of this guna and karma are affecting my own nature my self which is the reflection of his self is not affected by my own guna karma also i may be the lowest of the low in this life but it does not affect my own self which is immutable imperishable just as the supreme self is and therefore he says namam karmani limpanti name karma phale spruha 
these actions are not tainting me. They are not affecting me. I may be the sinner all my life, but myself does not get affected by my sins. What is getting affected by sin is my mind and intellect. All the negative actions and negative tendencies are creating more and more ignorance in my mind. But the self is not affected. Same is applicable to the Supreme Self. No matter what happens in this world, no matter how much evil goes through this world, he is unaffected. This space will always remain unaffected by any pollution I create. It remains unaffected. Namam karmani limpanti. Name karma foles pruha. That's because I have no desire for any fruits of actions. When I created this universe, there was no fruits of actions I was looking for. And therefore, any action which takes place will not affect I because I have no desire, Trishna, for the fruits. Itimam yo abhijanati. Thus who knows me? Me, the self. Me, the supreme self, the Lord, as well as myself. Itimam yo abhijanati. Karma bhi nasa badhyate. Such a person is not bound by any action. I can do all wrong things in my dream, but as soon as I wake up, none of those actions will bind me. Because I have no desire to get the fruits from those my dream actions. As long as there is karma phala, pruha, there is bondage. During my dream, I suffer through, and therefore I call it nightmare. In dream, I want to be happy by avoiding whatever is making me unhappy. Because in dream, I completely bound by my actions. As soon as I wake up, I am not bound by those actions. So Bhagavan said, one who knows this, that the self never ever gets tainted by the actions, nor the self has any desire to enjoy any fruits. He is not bound by karma. So here is the prescription. Evam gnatva kritam karma purvehi api mumukshu bihe. The operative word here is mumukshu. One who wants to get liberated from this bondage is a mumuksha. At some level we are all mumuksha. Who among us says, I really like this limitations and sorrows and unhappiness? No one. Except the little kids and children or when you are mad. Meena was telling Medha something. As a, but if you do this, then it will make you happy, isn't it? I don't want to be happy. Three years old. Because she was mad. You know? We are asking her to do something which she didn't want to. She knows that if you let me do this, I'll be happy. Medha, if you do this, you will be happy. No, I don't want to be happy. Because I already know what my happiness is. Not where you are telling me where happiness is. Okay. That's what our condition is right now. These people are telling us from ages that your happiness lies in this. No, 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 I'm happy here in the stock market. Evam gnatva krutam karma. One who knows that karma falas pruha is the cause for all the problems. And the self will never be tainted by it. And therefore you identify with the self and not this limited equipment. And you will be free. You will not be bound by these actions. Mumuksu in the past. Purvehi api. In the past, those who were mumuksu, those who were trying to get out of this bondage and wanted liberation, they acted in this world, keeping that in mind that self never gets affected by it. Kuru karma eva tasmat. Tvam. You also do that. Are you a mumuksu? Yes, yes, I am a mumuksu. Then do this. Because this is the tried and true method. In the past, many mumuksus did this and liberated. So I am not telling you something which is, you are a guinea pig. So let's try out and see whether it works for you. In the past, many, many people, purvehi purvataram kritam, just as in the past people have done, they kept their goal in mind that we want liberation. But they have to work in this world. So you and I also cannot get out of this world. We learned that in chapter 3. We have to work. So how do I, I continue working, keeping that attitude in mind? So just make some adjustment in your attitude only, Bhagavan said. Identify with yourself. Be assured that nothing is affecting yourself. No matter how bad your actions are up till now. As soon as you change your attitude, you will be liberated. With that, we'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neil 
but.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhave Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om